that was a good video. Hopefully that gave you guys a good information of who we are and what we've been doing. Um, I would like to start off the event by introducing um, the guest, the speaker. Um, so we have Ms. Saru Jindal. Ms. Saru is a QEAC certified senior course advisor with over seven years of specialist experience in the international and education sector. She is one of the most decorated managers at Aussie's group. Uh, Ms. Saru Jindal comes with a wealth of knowledge and information when it comes to regional courses and scholarship options. With her special innate skills and knowledge for that, um, Ms. Saru has also helped countless international students in achieving their student goals in Australia. Um, I would like to welcome Ms. Saru. Thank you, Meet, for that wonderful introduction. A very good afternoon to everyone who is joining us today for this regional courses and scholarship session. I'll just uh, start by sharing my screen. Anyone who's not able to see the screen, please put a comment, uh, you know, put a comment in the chat box so that we are able to help you out. So guys, regional courses and scholarships. I know it's all a word today that everybody wants to go and study in a regional area. Reasons that we'll be talking about in today's session, uh, majorly both, uh, you know, I know the reasons are both education and migration point of view, but let's discuss more in detail in this session. So in this session today uh, will be presented by me and my colleague Manpreet. So first we'll be discussing about what is a regional area, you know, major regional areas. What do you actually mean by regional area? And then the various scholarships which are provided by Australian government and the providers. And then we'll be going one state uh, after the other, starting from Victoria, New South Wales, uh, ACT, Tasmania, moving to Western Australia, Queensland, and we'll be covering, uh, you know, the course options available, the top courses in these regional areas, the various providers, as well as the scholarships, you know, which are running, especially for these providers. So let's go. Let's start the session. Now, basically, to start off, what is a regional area? You know. To start, we need to understand what basically do we mean by regional area, and this definition has been revised time and again. Now, according to the newest definition um, from Department of Home Affairs, a uh, new regional area definition was given, which, which says that everything except for Melbourne, Sydney and Brisbane is considered regional. I know some of the areas which we think about, say Adelaide, you know, uh, we say we don't find it regional because it's equivalent. It, it has got city vibe to it. But then, yes, according to the department, it's still considered regional. So anything except for Melbourne, Sydney and Brisbane, everything else is considered regional. And now there are three categories. So one is this category which we just. Where it's not regional. And category three, a category two is cities and major regional centers. Now, what do we mean by cities and major regional centers is, a, a, as I said, Adelaide, it is a city, you know, and it still falls into a category two regional area. It's still a regional area, but falls into category two. So similarly, other cities like uh, Perth, Gold Coast, Sunshine Coast, Canberra, Newcastle, Lake Macquarie, Wollongong, Illawarra, Geelong and Hobart. All these are considered as a category two regional centers. And then there's another category called category three in which there are some designated postcodes. So anything apart from these cities that I just mentioned, I'll just repeat them again. Perth, Adelaide, Gold Coast, Sunshine Coast, Canberra, Newcastle, Lake Macquarie, Wollongong, Illawarra, Geelong and Hobart. Anything apart from these is considered as a regional center or an other regional areas. Now. Obviously, the difference between from migration point of view, a two years work visa in category three, you get a four years post study work visa. But when it comes to questions in relation to how do you apply, does every student get it? We can always, um, you know, uh, speak to one of our RMAs and get these questions answered because today's session will be focused more on education, more about the courses and the scholarships. area is there any benefit uh, Brisbane why should I move to Perth or why should I consider moving to Tasmania to study 
the top most point obviously comes to our mind is lifestyle and culture. There's a huge change in our lifestyle uh, when we move to these regional areas. And trust me, guys, some of the people I know personally who have moved to Tasmania thinking that, you know, we are only going there for some time and then we're going to come back. They haven't come back. They have settled there and they are really enjoying it. They was like, oh, I don't want to come back to Melbourne. I'm enjoying my life here in Tasmania. Obviously, the lifestyle will be different. You'll be more relaxed. Uh, you know, it's a more relaxed kind of lifestyle. But then that is something which is a personal choice. Second point is lower cost of living. Now, of course, the cost of living, if you compare from Melbourne, Sydney, and if you compare that uh, in Tasmania or Canberra, the cost of living is very less there. Your accommodation is very less. Your other expenses, which include your transport, your food and everything, everything is, you know, lesser than uh, you don't have to pay that much. Uh, rental costs are half in Canberra. Pleasant academic academic atmosphere. You know, when you actually study in these regional universities, you get that university feel. If you are studying uh, in city areas like in Melbourne, the city campuses of universities, you are just confided to a building and smaller classrooms. But on the contrary, when you look at the, the campus of University of Tasmania, uh, you know, or you look at the Federation University campus, any of the regional universities, when you look at their campuses, that is what the feel of, uh, you know, a regional university brings to you. When we come from our countries, you know, we always think that Australian University, we are going there, we'll get that campus feel, we'll get an amazing campus with good greenery, lush, uh, you know, greenery there. But then when we come to these city buildings, we was like, there is a huge shock which students feel. They was like, OK, this is not what we imagined. This is not what we expected. But then when you actually study in these regional universities, you get that academic atmosphere, you get that amazing campus feel. You get to explore the real Australia in these regions. Points. Uh, the major highlight which is post-study work visa. As I said, the category two and category any of these regional areas, you get a post work visa of two years, you get it for either three years or four years. And then obviously the extra points for migration. But when it comes to any questions in relation to this, you can always uh, contact one of our RMAs who can help you with these. I hope some of these benefits may incite some of you to go and study in a regional area now. Next is scholarships. Now, there are different types of scholarships in Australia. It's not just the scholarships which are by the provider, but also by Australian government. There are a lot of scholarships which are actually, uh, you know, given by the Australian government. And many students are not aware of this. So as the Australia Awards. Now, Australia Awards is basically a scholarship which is controlled by the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade. And this is obviously a, a government issued scholarship. Now, it, it Australia Awards is basically given to some specific countries with, they, with whom uh, Australia has uh, these contracts and students who are selected for these scholarship, it is amazing. Uh, you get your tuition fee covered, you get your travel expenses, you get your OHSC, you get your accommodation, everything is covered for you. But then you do get in, uh, get in a contract with the Australian government that you, after you complete your course, you would be leaving the country for a minimum of two years before you return back. So there are obviously pros and cons to it, but then, and also there is a limited set of countries which are included and do have these contracts. Just to name a few, um, there's Nepal, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Philippines, Vietnam, who have these uh, agreements with Australia to get students for uh, Australia awards. Second one is the Destination Australia Scholarship. Now, this Destination Australia Scholarship is again an Australian government issued scholarship, but then it is mainly for students uh, in regional areas, you know, the tertiary providers in regional Australia. So students wish to have regional universities, many of the universities and TAFEs, they offer a Destination Australia scholarship. I'll just give you an example. CSU, um, the regional CSU campuses in New South Wales, they still have a Destination Australia scholarship seats available for their Masters of IT program for the upcoming July intake. And the value for this is up to 15,000 per year. 
So, you know, if your master's is for two years, that's a total of 30,000. So the application is pretty simple, but then yes, you need to submit all the additional documents, your academic, your extracurricular, everything is counted in here. And you need to build up your profile to get the scholarship. But if you're looking to study IT, then you know, this is one thing which is with CSU original, they're still offering. They still have places for the scholarship because by this time, most of the providers, they have run down of uh, Destination Australia scholarships means it's closed already. But then there are some seats available with CSU. The next is Australia Research Training Program. It is for by research. So uh, RTP scholarship is controlled by the university. So you apply to the university and they each university may have a different application process and a selection criteria, but the scholarship itself is given by the Australian government. And then so of the students are aware of. Provider scholarships may be merit based, may not be merit based. Maybe if you're moving to a regional area, also, you know, some providers they do give uh, a regional scholarship as well if you're moving to one of the regional areas. Some of the providers they give alumni scholarships. So, you know, if you have studied a course with them and you return back to them, for example, university, they give a 10% alumni scholarship. So, if you are a returning student, they do give a 10% scholarship to you. So, there are alumni scholarships as well. Next, let's start with the most important part, going state by state um, and talking about the courses and the scholarships there. So starting off with Victoria. Now, I myself uh, am from Melbourne and my colleague Manpit, she is from South. So we have different uh, which we can share with our own experiences. Now, when it comes to Victoria, we know sitting in Melbourne, Melbourne is not a regional area. Rather, it's not even considered neither in category two or three. But then if you move, if you move just a few kilometers away from the city, Geelong, Ballarat, Shepparton, all these areas are considered regional. So these are the major, major regional areas. I mean, there are many more, but then I've, point, I've pointed out the areas where there are providers who have campuses and, you know, you have course options in these areas. Now, a few things. Why should you study in a regional area? It's more affordable. The courses are large. Course options are unique. You know, there's this course um, available in one of Latrobe's regional areas. It's called Master of Internet of Things. This course is not available anywhere in Melbourne. So they are very unique courses which are only available in regional or regional areas, regional universities. And last but not the least is obviously the visa incentives. So that is something which obviously attracts the students to move to regional areas there. You know, they get more migration points. They have more options. Which is great. Uh, the next is most popular courses in regional areas, regional Victoria. Sometimes students don't even know that, you know, in Victoria as well, there are courses available in regional areas. So most important one are nursing, social work, teaching, hairdressing and beauty therapy, and then trade courses like commercial cookery, automotive and painting. So all these course options are available in regional areas. So next we'll go through the providers. And then when I go to each provider, I'll tell you what course options are available in their regional areas as well. So starting off with Federation University, they have a campus in Ballarat, which is a post code double three five. You know, as we discussed about category, it's easy for you to uh, prioritize and look from your migration as well. Now, in Federation University, uh, in the Ballarat campus, they have a lot of course options like nursing, social work, teaching, IT, engineering. I mean, major courses which students go for nowadays is obviously one of the top choices is nursing, and they have bachelors of nursing available in their work available and you even can apply students they think that in social work i need to have a background in social sciences but for federation university they have a package course where you can do a graduate diploma plus a master so for students with non background in social work can also apply 
and they are offering great scholarships. There's a global innovator scholarship of 20% and global excellence scholarship of 25%. Now, obviously, we'll not go into detail about these scholarships because it is on a case to case basis. Every scholarship has different entry criteria. When it comes to both these scholarships, they are academic based. So it depends on uh, what is your past uh, percentage, whether it is onshore, you have completed a qualification or even offshore. You know, it goes, uh, it looks at major. If you think of a broad category, I can say that if you have achieved 60% and above, you know, you may fit into some of the other scholarship. Uh, next is Latrobe University. Now with Latrobe University, they have a campus in Bendigo. And the original course option, uh, regional area, they have course options in nursing, social work, and occupational therapy. So in regional campus, again, nursing, social work, and occupational therapy, one of the most, uh, one of the most in demand uh, courses. And they have scholarship of alumni advantage, 10%, as I told you earlier. Any returning student has a scholarship of 10% with them. And they have a lateral international scholarship up to 25%. Obviously, depending on how your previous percentage was in your previous studies, uh, it starts from 10%, then 15%, 20%, 25% goes like this. Next is uh, they have a campus in Geelong. And Deakin has also international of 25% and those options are major, which are popular courses. Nursing is available with them in regional area. Next is Kengen, which is basically Bendigo TAFE, and they have a campus in Bendigo. They have a number of campuses uh, throughout Melbourne, but they have a regional campus in Bendigo and they're running diploma of nursing at that campus. And there are still seats available for that um, for this year. So if any of the students are looking for diploma of nursing in regional Victoria, Kengen still has seats available. Then Veritas Institute in Geelong, they have cookery options. Uh, next is Center of Excellence. Again, in Geelong, they have painting as well as hairdressing. Uh, the last is Everest Institute, which is in Shepparton, again, one of the regional areas, and they have automotive course available. So when it comes to vocational, you know, there are no major scholarships which are offered, but there are promotions which always come time to time. So. Uh, for these courses also, so for example, painting in center of excellence right now for the two years course, the price is 19,000, you know, and these prices, they may vary, but this is if you're looking at two years course for a trade qualification, uh, you're looking at 15 to 20,000. And that is a, a basic average for any of the two years or, uh, you know, these trade courses. OK, next move to New South Wales. Now, it's become very, very popular, um, especially regional New South Wales, because um, according to our conversations with our RMAs, they, you know, we have seen that there are a lot of invitations which have come for 190, especially in IT New South Wales. And in uh, regional New South Wales also, a lot of options are available for 491, you know. And there are a lot of providers, a lot of universities which are available in regional New South Wales. So that you have plenty of course options, much more wider I mean, if you compare Victoria and New South Wales, you will find better course options in New South Wales as compared to Victoria. So let's start off uh, now. What are the major regional areas in New South Wales? Uh, the major regional areas are Albury, Wagga, Lismore, Coffs Harbour, Wollongong. Also, of course, there are a lot of other regional areas also, but I just pointed out the major regional areas where most of the university campuses are. Now, when it comes to New South Wales regional, guys, this is the largest and the most diverse regional economy throughout Australia. New South Wales is known and popular for their regional areas and the kind of, um, you know, the kind of greenery, the kind of beach, beaches that you'll find, the national parks, it's amazing. The coastline is amazing. I mean, you, you won't regret living in regional New South Wales. And obviously the lower cost of living um, doesn't go without fail. You know, that goes hand in hand. If you're saving money there, why not? So what are the most popular courses in regional New South Wales? The most popular courses are nursing, occupational therapy, social work, information technology, therapy, and like commercial cookery, automotive, painting, wall and floor tiling, bricklaying and brocklaying. So all these course options are available in regional New South Wales. 
So let's go with the providers. So when we go provider by provider, we'll talk about the top courses which they have as well, as well as the scholarships. Now, first, Charles Sturt University. They have a lot of campuses available throughout regional New South Wales. The major ones being Albury, Bathurst, Wagga Wagga, Orange, Port Macquarie. And all these are in category three. So, you know, four years of. And with CSU, uh, regional, the most popular courses are nursing and IT. And guys, they have a July intake. And for both these courses, seats are still available. The bachelors of nursing with CSU is quite popular and uh, they are offering 30% scholarship, which is international student support scholarship, 30% of the first year of study. I mean, this is amazing when it comes to nursing. Normally students think that I may not get scholarship because seats are so limited, but then, you know, scholarships are available throughout for all courses. So it's 30% of the first year of study and they have a bachelors of IT and bachelors and masters of IT. And with their masters of IT, they've got 12 specializations. So uh, specializations in cybersecurity, in uh, cloud computing, everything. I mean, any course option you can think of, they've got those specializations. In, I'm in this data science as well with them. So amazing course options. And for the masters of IT, uh, I won't. I just want to remind you again that they have Destination is 12,000. Next is Southern Cross University. They um, is in Gold Coast, but they do have regional campuses in New South Wales, which is Lismore and Cox Harbour. You know, and when you think of uh, its location from Sydney, obviously both these locations are uh, on the coastline and they are around two to three hours drive from Sydney as well. And again, a category three option. Now with Southern Cross University, they have nursing, they have social work, they have IT, they have engineering. All these course options are available and they have amazing scholarship. I mean, they have a regional scholarship of 5000 per year, which I said. Now this regional scholarship is being offered to every student who qualifies and who meets the entry level requirement. So, you know, even if you don't meet the criteria, I mean, your past uh, history in you do not have 60 percent, but you meet the entry requirement for any of their courses. You get the scholarship of regional scholarship. So as I said, you know, some of the regional providers, they have a regional scholarship that just because you're moving to a regional area, they're offering you that scholarship. And also there's an outstanding academic scholarship of 15,000 per year now, which is where um, uh, your past records come into place that, you know, depending on how much uh, you have uh, in your previous records. Now next is TAFE New South Wales. Guys, with TAFE New South Wales, you think of a course and they have it. They have pretty much all the courses. So with TAFE New South Wales, they have a lot of courses like painting, bricklaying, rocklaying, uh, community services, engineering, nursing, commercial cookery. You know, any trade occupations that you can think of, they have it. They have bachelors of, uh, they have diploma of nursing as well as they have diploma in engineering as well. Next is Speech Institute. Um, they have a campus in Tweed Heads, which is again a category three. Now, Peach Institute has commercial cookery and painting. And the last one which we'll discuss today is Actors College of Theatre and Television. They have a campus. They've recently opened this campus in Wollongong, which is a category two, and they have automotive course available there. You know, uh, earlier I know there were, lot, there were not a lot of providers offering automotive in Sydney, but then few have opened up, and this is in one of the regional areas in Wollongong. So guys, that's about New South Wales. So we have covered Victoria, we have covered New South Wales. Now we'll be moving on to Tasmania. Now in Tasmania, doesn't matter where you're studying, where you're living, the entire state is regional. And with Tasmania, uh, the basic thing is if you enjoy great outdoors and you don't mind cold weather because yes, it's a little chilly in Tasmania, but at the same time, you are conscious we are looking for lower cost of living, then Tasmania is the place for you. 
amazing amazing outdoors guys if you really like outdoor activities you know like hiking cycling fishing rock climbing then yes tasmania is the place for you you should be moving to tasmania definitely if you're looking at these options amazing amazing place to live now most popular courses in tasmania saru sorry uh, just just to interrupt i think there's some um video sound quality lag are you able to like speak slower move to a different location if that's possible i think some of the viewers can't hear you properly Okay, I'll just move a little closer. If you can, that would be good. Yes. Uh, do let me know, uh, please, again, if you are not able to hear. Uh, is it okay now? Is it better? Yeah, it's better. Yeah. Yeah? Okay. I'll let you know if, if there's anything else. Sure, yeah. Please do interrupt me in between. If Tasmania, the most popular courses, social work, laboratory medicine, guys, this course, Masters of Laboratory Medicine with University of Tasmania. It's one of the most popular courses. And, uh, you know, you get to work as a medical laboratory scientist after completing this course. And they have very limited seats available. It's only available in IIT and University of Tasmania. Uh, community services, which is a diploma of community services and horticulture which is one of the most popular and newest courses in Tasmania, and then trade courses like commercial cookery, automotive, building and construction. So all these courses are valuable. I know in Tasmania, the students look at, okay, what, which of the courses in this, and you can always, uh, most of these courses, so you know, you don't need to worry about that. Now in Tasmania, uh, the only university option available is the University of Tasmania. And pretty much they have all the courses, but then the most popular one are nursing, engineering, laboratory medicine, and social work. Their masters of social work is also the most popular courses. The, the two courses which we, I know maximum students, they apply for University of Tasmania is these two. Masters of occupational therapy, uh, sorry, masters of laboratory medicine, and the masters of social work. And they have a Tasmania international scholarship of 25% available. Next is Top Education Institute in Hobart. Now, with Top Education Institute, they only have the Masters of Accounting available. So if any of the students are interested in study accounting, this is the only private provider which offers the Masters of Accounting there. Then the next is obviously the TAFE, TAS TAFE. Now with TAS TAFE, they have a lot of, uh, what do you call campuses? Uh, say Hobart, Launceston, Newham, um, Invermay, and Wyrone. Now, obviously, the most uh, popular uh, of the campuses is Hobart, but then with TASTEF, they have pretty much a lot of course options available. The most popular being Diploma of Nursing and Diploma of Community Services, but they do have commercial cookery as well, and they do have horticulture as well. Guys, horticulture is one of the courses which is becoming quite popular in Tasmania. Then it is Technical Institute of Victoria. Now, the only private vocational provider who have opened their campus recently in South La uh, Launceston, and they offer the horticulture program there. They have the certificate four and the diploma of horticulture. And this is the category three, guys. The Hobart is category two, but um, this area is category three. Next is Orange International College. They have a campus in Hobart, and they do have building and construction course there. Again, VTI, which is Vocational Training Institute, they do have a campus in Melbourne as well, and they have a campus in Hobart. They have automotive as well as diploma of community services there, and they have some really good promotional pricing going on for Tasmania. Next is AIBT in Hobart. They again have pretty much a lot of course options available. They do have community services, some transport courses also, and logistics course also available there. And Australian Sovereign College. This is a new college in Hobart. They have recently opened and they have Diploma of Community Services available and they have a really good promotion, um, especially, you know, if you are looking to study Diploma of Community Services and you are on a 485, in that case, they have a very good promotion. I think roughly around 6,200 for the entire course. So these are the major providers in Tasmania 
and as we can see when it comes to scholarships you know the scholarships are only provided by universities but when it comes to private providers especially at vocational level they have some special package pricing and when it comes to these package pricing they are offered intake wise now say for example a special pricing with australian sovereign college as i just told you may be available for july intake august intake but may not be available for october intake you know and also these promotions they keep on changing so you need to always check uh, you know and if you have a promotional price you need to lock it then and there okay so that is about tasmania the next um going to act again this entire uh, state is regional and this is basically uh, now the capital of act is canberra which is also the national capital of australia now canberra is obviously you know you again have a very relaxed lifestyle in canberra it's a very smaller location compared compared to um, victoria or new south wales a very small uh, city to live in but then it has got all those attractions it has got a lot of festivals which they do celebrate throughout the year a lot of events keep happening in canberra it's not a place where uh, you know that you will feel lonely or you will feel out of place you have a lot of events lot of festivals there where you can actually participate in it's very well connected um, you know when it comes to transport you have very a, a very good connection there and yes it is affordable and it is also one of the safest cities to live in australia um i mean it has time and again been uh, regarded as one of the safest cities you know there the, the crime rate in canberra is the lowest in australia the most popular courses in canberra obviously starting off with nursing now i am putting nursing everywhere based because um, you know because of covid and the situation currently a lot of students are going to uh, are studying nursing it's also from your career point of view but also from migration point of view the australian government is supporting you know nurses registered nurses so a lot of uh, students they want to study either diploma bachelor's or masters of nursing whatever is possible so it is the i would say the hot course right now so nursing teaching as again one of the popular courses then information technology it community services uh leadership and management you know general diploma and advanced diploma of leadership management or diploma and advanced diploma of business are also quite popular courses um, in canberra and then trade courses like commercial cookery building and construction painting carpentry now this painting and carpentry course has recently uh, opened up in canberra these course options were not available earlier so these trade courses are also available in um, canberra now let's just have a look at the major providers in canberra and the scholarships which are available now when it comes to universities there's university of canberra uh, now one thing is when canberra it is a category 2 entire state you know so uh, there is no reg region uh, within act which will be a category 3 so the entire region is category 2 now uh, university of canberra has uh, really popular courses again nursing teaching social work to say now the scholarship which is offered by university of canberra is international course merit scholarship and international high achiever scholarship these both are academic based scholarships so depends on um, how your percentage has been you know again whether you have studied in australia or uh, in an, in your country they look at uh, any of the courses that you have completed recently they look at what is the percentage you have achieved in that and accordingly the scholarship uh, will be awarded next is tafe canberra which is canberra institute of technology again one of the tafes which has pretty much a lot of course options they have diploma of nursing they have it community services commercial cookery building and construction a lot of course options available with uh, tafe canberra as well next is crown institute of business and technology they mostly have business courses and it courses so leadership and management uh, which is diploma and advanced diploma and then diploma and advanced diploma in it available they do have a campus in sydney as well where they have more course options but in canberra it's only leadership management and it courses and currently they are giving a 10% covid discount for students you know just to support the students during these um, difficult times at the moment next is capital college now capital college has again leadership management and business courses and they do have individual support as well which is again one of the uh, courses which is becoming very popular nowadays then cbtc which is canberra business and technology 
college now this college is the one which has recently opened the painting and carpentry courses in canberra so you know if you're looking to study uh, these trade courses in painting carpentry then uh, cptc has started these courses and they do have other business courses and they have commercial cookery as well uh, last is the unity college they do have leadership and management and community services again in canberra now pretty, uh, obviously this list is not I mean, doesn't have all the providers in Canberra, but then I've just listed down the major providers, but then there are other providers as well. Guys, that's it from my end. Um, my colleague Manpreet will take over from here and she'll start off with the uh, other states and talk about the courses. Thank you for listening to me. If you have any questions, please put it in the comment section and we'll try our level best to keep last 10 minutes to answer the questions. But then we do have a question and answer session as well at 530 today. Thank you, guys. Thanks for that. Um, Saru, I will just it was great to know about the regional courses and all the options we have to for the scholarship as well. And now I'd like to pass over to Saru. Pass. Thanks for that. And um, Manpreet will take over now. Uh, Manpreet is. Hello, can everyone hear me? Yes. Yes. Uh, yep. Yeah, sorry. Manpreet is a, also a QEAC certified course advisor and education manager. Um, she's from Adelaide office and she harbors strong desire and passion to help international students to achieve the best career outcome. She is a subject matter expert in consulting international students for best scholarship outcome for regional providers. Um, yeah, so she will take over from, from here there. Um, I'll pass it over to you, Manpreet. Thank you very much, Meet. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Manpreet. Uh, it's lovely for all of you to join us in this session today. I'm pretty sure you have already gained a lot of information and there's a lot to process. So I'll try my best to make it more fun and easy for you guys to kind of absorb so much of information that you are going to get today. And I know um, it's not practically possible to even grasp everything and kind of go on with that. But we'll try level best to give you the best possible information that will help you to decide your options in regional areas. I'll quickly share my screen and we'll start the presentation. So we'll start off with South Australia. As you all are aware, South Australia is one of the very, very popular destination to study. The entire state is regional, but the main um, region in South Australia are obviously Adelaide as one of the most popular city of South Australia. Um, recently, according to Global Livable Index, it was ranked third most livable city in the world 2021. Um, that itself uh, obviously says a lot uh, that how much these cities offer to international students. Apart from that, obviously, South Australia has been known for its affordability, um, not just the living standard, but starting from the course to your um, living, the rentals are pretty cheap in here. The transportation is very reasonable for all international students. So it pretty much offers you an environment with a lot of multicultural people living in here. And then obviously the standard of living is very, very affordable. On top of that, our South Australian government has um, focused a lot in obviously increasing um, the regional uh, employability because of which obviously um, by 2022, um, there is a forecast that there will be 16,300 international jobs for international students who will be studying. It's a great opportunity obviously to make sure that if you are coming to South Australia, um, you're not just only getting a taste of quality education, but also um, the fact that you can also employ and get part-time job opportunity. Uh, apart from this, um, South Australia is very, very popular for its wines. Um, there are a lot of winery tours here, a um, lot of international tourists and students come and enjoy the beautiful wineries here. Um, and of course, South Australian wines are very, very popular too. Um, so it offers you um, a very um, multicultural environment, a beautiful wineries, affordability, and of course, uh, the major sectors where international students can focus on are health, um, hospitality, and tourism sectors. Um, hospitality and health specifically has been one of the prime target for South Australian. And a lot of international students, when they come here, these are the main areas that you will be seeing them working. So definitely um, South Australia, especially Adelaide, is one of the hot place if you're planning on to study. Now let's move to the next part, which is, um, sorry, yeah, 
the most popular courses that it offers. South Australia has many uh, popular options, but the major ones are nursing. As Saru also said that uh, nursing is is like the hot course. It's like potato and all curries. It, it is always there no matter what it is. So nursing has always been one of the popular choice uh, for many international students, not just because that it offers a great employment opportunities in the end, um, you can get a great package, but also the fact that the South Australian healthcare system is pretty amazing. So we do see a lot of uh, international students, especially in the COVID time, taking responsibility, working as a health uh, frontline workers, which was amazing. So yes, nursing, of course, is one of their popular courses for many international students. Second popular choice is information system. There are a lot of um, uh, international students, and especially interstate too, uh, who comes and study information system in South Australia. That has been one of the most popular course and hot course going on. Apart from that, social and community services. So social work, community services is also one of the popular choice. Um, reason being, South Australia has a large uh, population of elderly age group. We, they cater a lot to them um, and there are a lot of nursing homes, which is also why community services, social work, disability, individual support, these areas has been very, very popular for international students to come study and also work into these sectors. So these Courses that we have shortlisted, shortlisted are the one in which we see high employability. We've seen students performing extremely well. And of course, um, these are the ones which are in demand uh, in, in Australia as of the moment. Um, fourth one is obviously trade courses. In trade, um, South Australia offers the most popular one, if you have list down, is horticulture, commercial cookery, automotive technology. We have a couple of new courses which has been introduced, um, such as wall and floor tiling. Uh, it has been introduced um, into South Australia in 2021, going extremely well. Uh, apart from that, uh, apart from wall and floor tiling, we also have um, the last one, which is very popular, is carpentry. So these five trade options are very, very popular in South Australia. Australia. Next, um, I've already covered individual supports. So there are short certifications that you could do from any Krikos provider. Um, they do offer you industry placements as well, which obviously increase your opportunity for you to get placed. And these short courses, individual support uh, starts somewhere from three months, can go up to one year. And um, the reason why these courses are very, very popular are because mostly I would say 95% or 90% of the students generally do able to secure their job after doing these um, certificates. So definitely one of the very, very popular and very much in demand because of the employability reason. Um, other than that, hospitality and business management vet courses. Obviously, um, hospitality and tourism is, is one of the key area, key sector that Australian government has been focused on. And South Australia is very much popular for its tourism and hospitality activities. So a lot of international students express their interest to obviously study this course. On top of that, um, international students are given 20 hours, obviously, on their student visa to work. And we have seen that hospitality sector, there are lots and lots of international students who get an opportunity to obviously um, experience the industry, work in hospitality and enjoy obviously the culinary arts of South Australia. Um, business management courses, we've got um, leadership courses, social media, project management, networking, marketing. Um, there are heaps of um, diploma level courses that are available in vocational training. These um, one to two years courses are extremely popular for many international students who are currently on share. And in fact, uh, we have seen many students who have already finished a certain qualification looking for these uh, diploma courses to enhance their skills so that they can get better job opportunities for themselves. Uh, now I'll be talking about the major uh, South Australian providers and the scholarships that they offer. Um, as you all are aware, uh, the main public university in South Australia are University of South Australia, Flinders University, University of Adelaide. All these are um, actually category two, as Saru has already told you about what category one, category two, and category three regionals areas are. So these public universities are part of category two. Um, the scholarship that they generally offer is on the basis of academic. Obviously, the entry requirement is quite competitive. They pretty much offers all kinds of courses, starting from teaching, nursing, all the popular courses that you are looking for, they will, they will be having it. Um, their scholarship criteria is generally on the basis of 
of your academic. So they have academic merit scholarship of 20 to 25 percent um, there. And some of the providers are also offering global excellence um, scholarship or high achievers scholarship of up to 50 percent. That totally depends on your grades. Obviously, um, if you are a high performance student and you have achieved a good grades in your year 12 or let's say in your bachelor's and you're looking for master's option or you have just finished your schooling and you're looking for bachelor options and you've got great grades, um, South Australia will definitely honor that and will offer you a great um, scholarship on the courses that you will select. Uh, apart from that, we also have TAFE South Australia. TAFE, uh, as everyone knows, is a government institution. Um, always have something good to offer. They have many small courses, but they're very, very popular for their vocational courses and for their obviously associate degrees. Um, they have associate degrees in engineering, uh, which are very popular courses that they offer. Apart from that, Diploma of Nursing is one of their popular courses. Um, they are also very popular for automotive technology. That's one of their most uh, popular courses. They have a great workshops, um, uh, trade workshops uh, through which you can obviously gain a lot of practical skills. Um, and that has been the reason why TAFE South Australia has also always been very popular. But when it comes to the scholarship, um, they generally always have uh, something or the other, like some discount. Uh, but as of the moment, um, they had um, destination scholarship for hospitality courses. Any students who's interested to obviously study in TAFE South Australia um, <clears throat> can get in touch with us. Um, their tuition fees have, is very, very reasonable already. So they generally not offer a lot of scholarship. However, um, if you are looking for courses such as um, nursing, uh, associate degrees in engineering, and obviously they offer great packages and pathways to universities as well. Um, TAFE South Australia has um, the pathways um, through which you could study in public universities as well. For example, if you're doing a diploma and you want to study bachelors, you could potentially do a package course with Day South Australia leading to University of South Australia. Um, the very, very popular program that I've seen so far is Diploma of Nursing leading to Bachelor of Nursing. Um, when you do diploma, you do get obviously credit towards a bachelor's as well, which is why um, the whole package itself has been extremely popular. Apart from that, we do have Torrance University. Um, they are offering academic merit scholarship of up to 25%. They also have onshore international scholarship for onshore students, which is 15% of the tuition fees. Um, they have up to 30% of scholarship on business courses. Um, they also offer alumni scholarship, actually, which is 25% if you have studied in Torrance before. Um, they do have um, extremely you know, uh, good courses, especially information system has been one of their most, most popular course and engineering management hospitality. They have around 20% scholarship on hospitality courses. If you are interested in studying uh, at Torrance University, July and June and July is the next uh, intake which is running at the moment. Uh, they've got some good scholarship. Um, apart from that, we also have IIBIT. IIBIT is actually part of Federation University. Um, so they both have a collaboration together um, and they do offer courses in which you, you do get actually a dual degree. Um, you get one from IIBIT and one from Federation University. Um, Federation University have a great promotion going on for onshore and offshore both. So if you're sitting in any corner of the world um, looking to study, um, you know, courses such as software engineering, they have um, great IT courses. They also have MBA courses, business courses that they offer. And currently they're offering 20 to 25 percent of scholarship on all the tuition fees for the upcoming intakes. And it is exclusive for onshore and offshore students both. Um, next we have is Kaplan Business School. Kaplan Business School is widely known for their business courses, especially MBA, uh, because they offer internship in pretty much all the business courses that they offer, which is why they have been extremely popular for the business courses. So they have a great scholarship, uh, scholarship of up to 30% going on on the basis of your academics. Apart from that, they also have 10 to 20% of international transfer scholarship for onshore students if you have studied in Australia before. Um, Lastly, the most attractive scholarship which has been um, going on with Kaplan Business School is the Health Work Frontline Scholarship. It's a massive 50% of off on your entire tuition fees if you are working in health sector. Um, all the international nurses, um, anybody who's working in um, health sector and has been the frontline worker can avail 50% off in their courses. Their most popular courses, masters, all the MBA um, and 
and they have unique specializations as well, uh, which is what they are known for. Apart from that, we've got great vocational providers. As I said, trade is one of the key area as well that a lot of international students generally show interest to study. So we do have some vocational providers such as Equals International, Ironwood, Durban International, Skills Australia, TAFE South Australia, I've already mentioned AHTS and many more, but these are one of our major providers. Um, as Saru already said that these vocational providers generally don't have any scholarship going on. They generally have some uh, promotion on intakes, um, some discounts, bursaries, early bird discounts. For instance, if you if you if you say, for example, enroll into your course early, you probably can get 1000 extra off in your studies. Or let's say, if, for instance, if you are internally doing well, they can offer you some discount or some promotion going on. So there is always um, some sort of discount available with the uh, vocational provider. So if you are, for example, interested in the next available intake, get in touch with any of our counselor and we'll be able to guide you and tell you what is the next discount or promotion going on with these vocational providers. Next, I will be talking about Northern Territory. Well, um, Northern Territory has been one of the beautiful states that you could visit to. Um, Northern Territory obviously have a lot of uh, Australian outbacks. The entire state is regional um, and of course it is a hub of one of the very, very popular university in the world, which is CDU, Charles Darwin University. Charles Darwin University, it ranks top 2% of the world's university. Um, so obviously Northern Territory, is it's, it's great and it's a beautiful place. It has a religious place as well called Uluru, uh, which is a great tourist attraction. Many people, many tourists from the world, they come and visit this great sacred place. And it's one of the sacred places in the world as well, which is why it's one of the world uh, tourist attraction place. You could also enjoy great festivals um, such as Darwin Festival. There's a Darwin beer to get as well. It's a great festival to enjoy uh, Australian beer. Uh, on top of that, um, Northern Territory, sometimes um, there are a lot of students who ask this question to me. It's a very, uh, very frequently asked question that if I move to such um, states, I'm probably going to be isolated. There are, you know, less population. Um, I won't have job opportunities. I probably will not have a great career. These are the questions that students generally have when they move to because they want happening life. Um, one of the great thing about Northern Territory is that if you are studying there, if you are coming there, apart from enjoying obviously the great tourist attraction, you'll also see that uh, Northern Territory has the lowest unemployment rate in the country. So obviously, um, if you are coming here, you do not need to worry about your employment as well, um, apart from obviously the safe environment and everything that it offers, it offers um, job opportunities to you as well. So certainly uh, one of a very um, great um, city and state to kind of go and study. Now the most, most popular courses Northern Territory offers is computer science. Um, environmental Engineering, um, MBA, Masters of Business Administration, Nursing, uh, as always, Teaching, Hospitality, and they also have occasional courses such as Business, uh, Leadership, and Telecommunication is, is one of their most, most important courses. Now, these courses, obviously, as I mentioned, Charles Darwin University is one of their key provider. So it, I'll just quickly jump off on their scholarships and the providers. So Charles Darwin University, you, you would see that um, it pretty much offers all the kinds of courses that you're looking on into the category, into the most popular courses. But the most important thing about studying with CDU is it's a category three. So obviously you get an opportunity to, to get longer temporary graduate visa post finishing this course. So in migration point of view, um, Northern Territory has been a very hot destination to go as well because Charles Darwin University offers you a lot of courses under one roof and they have great scholarships starting from high achievers, which is up to 50% uh, off on tuition fees. They have Global Excellence Scholarship, which is 50% off in first year. Um, and of course, 10 year, 10 percent in the following year. They have Global Leader Award, uh, which is 25 percent off in the first year, and then they do 10 percent in the subsequent years. Um, they also have Global Achievers Award, which is 15 percent off in the first year only. Now, all these um, kinds of scholarship that they offer generally also obviously have um, a CRE criteria or eligibility criteria to basically enter and be eligible. So, if you are planning on to study uh, 
one of the popular courses there in NT, get in touch with us and we, we can help you out in obviously understanding the eligibility for the scholarship and what is the criteria that you have to fulfill. Apart from that, they've got very, um, you know, well-known vet providers, vocational providers. We have IH Sydney. Um, they have campus in Northern Territory. Uh, the postcode is 0800. Um, generally, um, as we said, all these vet providers starting from IH Sydney, Australian City College, Australian Career Careers College, all these three colleges are very well known for their diploma business uh, courses and also telecommunication. Um, and in terms of the scholarship, the early bird scholarship, early discount or promotion are what which are always keep going with these vet providers. So obviously, if you are interested in any of the vocational level courses or trade courses, just get in touch with us and we'll be able to assist you with the next available scholarship or the discount or the promotion they have. Moving on to the next state, which is Western Australia. Um, Western Australia, the, the major area um, that Western Australia have is uh, Perth. Uh, Perth has been listed as the regional centre very recently, and obviously uh, Western Australia is very, very well known for its safe environment to international students. You could um, obviously take taste of quality education because Western Australia have got great universities, great course options there um, that you could, you know, kind of get the taste of. Apart from that, um, Greater Perth was actually ranked as one of the most uh, affordable major capital in Australia, uh, which is why obviously these states or these areas, especially Perth has been one of the popular places post that as well, is also because of the affordability. Uh, on top of that, uh, according to the recent uh, survey, uh, Global Livable Index, Perth uh, ranked number six as world's most uh, livable city 2021. It's amazing um, that there are many cities from Australia which were actually been able to shortlist into the top 10 most livable city. I think um, that itself says a lot. Uh, it, it, it indicates that how much effort um, Australian government put into obviously uh, bring the quality education and to make sure that your experience so far should remain great. Uh, apart from that, um, they are very, very popular for science and innovation. There are a lot of research centers um, in uh, Western Australia. So science and innovation courses has been one of their popular key area and key industry that they work on. Moving to the most popular and the hot courses, Obviously, as always, nursing. <laughs> I think everybody is going to be like, why did we just declare that nursing is the most popular course of all? <laughs> but yes, yet again, it will always remain the most popular. But apart from that, we have computer science, engineering, uh, information technology, teaching, social work, early childhood. Um, these courses has been very, very hot courses. So we picked these courses based on the response that we have received from the students. To study these um, most popular courses, you have to obviously go to the major providers. So I'll cover the major providers and the scholarship that they offer, starting from the Murdoch University. Now, Murdoch University is a category two. They have a campus in Perth. Uh, the postcode is 6210. Uh, currently, they are offering lots of scholarships to international students. We'll start off with online international scholarship, 40%, which is basically for all international students, especially the offshore students who are going to study offshore, can get an opportunity to study the course online with 40% off on the entire tuition fees, which is obviously a great opportunity for you to you know, learn the courses that they offer. Apart from that, they also have 20% uh, onshore international scholarship going on on pretty much all the courses. They also have offshore international welcome 12,000 bursary on nursing. Generally, um, with nursing, uh, the the lot of students who generally say that because it's a, it's a popular program, it's very much in demand. We don't get a lot of scholarship options because regardless, um, the demand will always be there. But we still have. Um, there are lots of regional providers as well who have offered the scholarship and Murdoch is one of them who's offering scholarship on nursing and they have around some of the scholarship on business courses as well. So if you have one in an offshore location and wanting to study such courses, you can get a discount of up to twelve thousand dollars. For um, they also have another um, scholarship, which is eleven thousand dollars of bursary on other degrees apart from nursing and business courses. 
So obviously, a great opportunity is if you're planning on to study courses like social work, nursing, community services. Um, I believe uh, Modoc offers um, a reasonable tuition fees as well. They have next intake up and running. So obviously, you could um, reach out to any of our counselors and can can understand your eligibility for the programs. Uh, the second university we have in Perth is Edith Coven University. It's again category two, postcode 6027. Um, they also have some scholarship going on at the moment. Uh, starting from the most popular one is 30% off on their STEM courses. So just to simplify, STEM courses would be science, technology, engineering, and management. All kinds of such courses has 30% scholarship off for on sure online students only. So as you all are aware, because of the border restriction and border closure there are a lot of students who are unable to come to australia to physically study so there are a lot of uh, attractive scholarship um, these universities are offering to students who are going to study online uh, apart from that they have 20 percent off on nursing courses so i think um, i would say perth will definitely win when it comes to nursing scholarship because they've got some great scholarship going on um, as of the moment on nursing courses Apart from that, they also have 20% off on the tuition fees for onshore students. And this uh, this one is except the nursing courses. Next is we have Curtin University, um, category two again, uh, postcode is 6102. They have a couple of great scholarship going on at the moment, starting from academic merit scholarship. Now, generally, um, the academic merit scholarship um, for all kinds of providers is basically credit average. Uh, some of the provider ask for higher English as well. Um, I mean, having higher score in your IELTS, PT, TOEFL, any English exam that you have given. Um, generally, on the basis of that, they offer scholarship. But most popularly, if you have high grades starting from credit average plus, then you can avail such scholarships from these universities. The second scholarship they have is 20% off on STEM courses, and this is exclusively available only for postgraduate courses such as masters or so MBA business courses. So it's only available for those courses as of the moment. Next, uh, we have some vocational providers in WA as well. So some of the vocational providers which are very well known there is Leeds College. Um, it's again category two, um, postcode 6107. Then we have Stanley International College. They also have a campus in um, regional WA and the postcode is 6003. Now these two vocational courses, um, vocational places, as I mentioned again, as Saru also told you, generally have offers, bursaries and early bird discounts. So of course, if you need discount, just get in touch with us and we'll tell you the latest uh, promotion they are having. Quickly moving to the next one, uh, Queensland. Now, um, Queensland obviously is 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 one of my favorite state, I must say, because they offer a lot uh, in terms of in terms of experiencing life, in terms of obviously enjoying the quality education, in terms of um, all the beaches, the lifestyle, the city life, the the, the obviously the country life, every, everything is is under one place. But um, one of the major Regional centers, um, which obviously are one of the popular destination to our Sunshine Coast and Gold Coast. Um, Queensland capital has been ranked as 10th world's most livable city. As I mentioned already, that it's, it's, it's great to know that there are a few cities uh, and states of um, Australia which has been listed at top 10 and Gold Coast was one of them. Um, it obviously is the second largest state and offers beautiful beaches, reefs, rainforests. So obviously, if you are going to come here, you will be able to experience a great activities to do in the Gold Coast, especially. Uh, they have a plenty of part-time opportunities available for international students. The main uh, focused industry is obviously healthcare, hospitality, community services, manufacturing, mining, um, and resources, construction and agriculture. So these industries are very, very uh, popular over there and the government puts special efforts on these industry. Um, so the major providers and the major courses they offer in regional Queensland are basically nursing. Don't laugh at me. <laughs> Teaching, social work, engineering and business. Uh, I swear, next time I'm gonna say nursing, I'll just say N and you'll know. <laughs> Uh, teaching social work engineering business. Uh, these are shortlisted as one of the most 
popular courses in regional Queensland. The major providers, they have have some great scholarships as well. So without wasting any time, we'll move to the next one. So the major providers in Queensland we have is Southern Cross University. It's again category two. They have campus in Gold Coast. Postcode is 4225. Currently, they have some great scholarship and bursaries going on. Uh, they have a regional scholarship on courses uh, of up to 5,000 per year. They also have diversification scholarship, which is around $8,000 per year. They have third one, which is outstanding academic scholarship, which is 15,000 per year. Now, these scholarships generally are exclusive on their bachelor's, master's, all kinds of courses. And all the scholarships that you will see today that you might have seen, um, may or may not remember all of that, will always have some eligibility criteria for everybody. Saru, in the beginning, have explained you different kinds of scholarship that are being offered uh, by different education providers. So obviously, the, the scholarship that we are listing here will also have certain eligibility requirement that you have to fulfill. Next we have is University of Sunshine Coast, which is located in Sunshine Coast. Uh, it's a category two postcode 4502. Uh, the major scholarship that they offer is 15% International Student Outlook Scholarship. Um, this will be off on entire tuition fees. So if you are going to study, let's say nursing, nursing social work has been one of the very, very popular courses in Southern Cross and University of Sunshine. And they've got some amazing scholarship going on in these courses as well. Uh, next intake is July. Um, so obviously um, any international student currently on shore looking to study these courses, I think you can still make it to the to the next available intake. Next one we have is Homes Institute. Um, they have a campus in Gold Coast. This one, um, the postcode is 4217 category two. The main scholarship that Homes Institution is currently going on in their MBA, they're very, very known for their IT MBA programs, uh, is 10 to 15 percent of international scholarship. Um, I know that so far uh, we have covered many, many states. There's a lot of information that has been provided to you. Um, there's a lot of numbers that might be juggling in your heads. A lot of university names, what to choose, what not to choose, what to do, what not to do. I know there's a lot of confusion, uh, but we definitely wish to help you out to actually clear all the confusion. The, the idea of obviously presenting this entire information to you, or I'd say the key takeaways from this entire presentation is to understand that um, Australian government is now focused a lot on um, on obviously uplifting their regional areas. There are going to be there are currently great opportunities for international students to take advantage of obviously this uh, in terms of taking the scholarship that they offer on the courses that you're going to study in terms of opting out the courses that you're really interested. But that's that's just not it. You're not um, coming to a different country um, for education purpose has not um, is, is not limited to just studying, but also to make sure ensure that once you finish the studies, you take something with you um, in the employability. Uh, the, the fact that you also get an opportunity to work part time. Uh, it's a multicultural state, a multicultural um, country. We have many states, people from different cultures. So these regional areas, it actually give you the taste of that community, the taste of that togetherness because it's small, small towns, not have much. And they're really, really, um, you know, people who are very welcoming towards international students love to see more people around this because it it creates more opportunities for, for yourself and also help the government to boost the economy. So if I have to summarize this entire presentation, I must say that um, today through this presentation, we've learned that um, South, uh, especially the entire Australian government is focused on regional areas. Right now, there are many attractive scholarships going on in these regional providers. They have pretty much all the options, you name it, they have it. Um, you have options to study with vocational providers, universities, government institutions, states. You have many more options. If you want to know what um, course suits you the most, uh, we have a way through which we can just sit with you, assess your profile, help you out, all the questions that you have in your mind right now, we're happy to answer all those questions and we assist you in best possible way, possible way to tell you that what course, what state, what region would actually suit the need and of course um, the desires that you have in your mind. Um, 
we are pretty much close in wrapping up obviously our presentation and answer the questions that all the students might have as of the moment. I would like to thank everybody for obviously taking this time to listen to me this far. And of course, um, I hope you have learned something from this session. I'll hand over uh, this to Meeth and I'll just quickly close my screen. Thanks for that, Manpreet. Um, it was lovely to get to know about all the different er regional areas and what specific course we can do, especially nursing, <laughs> um, and all, all the different scholarship options that are available. Um, we had a lot of questions coming up in the chat. Um, I would like to just say that if we don't get the time to answer all of the questions, please feel free to join the Q&A session, where, which is just today. Um, I will be posting those links in, in the chat box as well. But um, we had a question from um, one of the audience who said, how do I become a solicitor? And he was very much interested in that. Do you have a quick response for that, Manpreet or Saru? And just to answer the question, if you are looking to become a solicitor, then you have to do a relevant course, um, which is either a bachelor's in law or a bachelor's in criminology. This is just one of the few course options which you can take. A lot of these courses, uh, course options are also available as dual degrees, like there's bachelor's of law and a bachelor's of business dual degrees available or a bachelor's of law with specialization in criminologies, you know, course options available. And a lot of universities uh, has these course, majorly universities, top universities have these course options available. But then obviously in order to become a solicitor, it depends on the state where you're looking to become a solicitor. So say, for example, in Victoria, if you want to practice as a barrister or a solicitor with the Supreme Court of Victoria, then you either have to clear one of the uh, licensing exams or, you know, or you have to do a 12 months internship post completion of the course. So it depends which uh, state the student is looking to become. But then obviously the pathway starts from a bachelor's course and then followed by some or the other internship or uh, a training program which the student has to do. That's great. Thanks for that. Um, Prince asked which uni is offering PhD scholarships for international students who are onshore in Victoria apart from academic excellence. Do you have any idea on that? Um, if I may say so, um, for PhD candidates, generally it's the research that they uh, they present first. There are always some sort of scholarship uh, going on with uh, with higher education. But for PhD, uh, they have to first start off by presenting the research paper, give it to the university and find obviously a professor who will be monitoring the research. It has to get an approval from them. Uh, from there onwards, based on their research, if it is something which is extraordinary and they really love it, they may offer you full scholarship. Uh, on top of that, they may offer you some stipend uh, in which you may not have to study. Um, you may not have to bear the cost of living for yourself as well. So um, there are great uh, scholarship, but it depends obviously very much on the subject that you choose for your research. And obviously the professor who's uh, going to monitor your research. So you have to do a bit of a work in doing that first, present your research. According to that, uh, the scholarship will, will uh, vary. So I think best is to get in touch, um, find somebody who could um, monitor your research. I hope that answer. Yeah, that, that, that's a good good answer, uh, Manpreet. Also, yeah, like um, Saru has posted, uh, Manpreet will also post her contact details, so you can also get in touch with them specifically if you'd like to talk, or you can also attend our Q&A session that's um, happening later today. Um, uh, if there was a question regarding um, a person being in Brazil and coming in for, I think, a PhD, do you have... Uh, any idea on that? PhD in uh, what particular study area? I mean, it all depends, you know, which study area they want to apply and want to do their research in. So every university has uh, different research areas which they focus on. Um, for example, Swinburne University um, in Melbourne has a lot of um, and IT and technology courses. Similarly, Macquarie University in uh, Sydney options and a lot of students who do uh, research uh, courses with them and they're pretty quick with the application process as well. So it all depends, you know, when students are looking to apply for research or PhD, first they need to look at the study area, the topic which they are looking at. And then um, every university uh, lists down the areas of research on their website. So it's good idea to always do a little, uh, you know, uh, 
a little go uh, i would say research on your end about uh, the university options as well because you need to first go through university website and assess you know which areas are they looking at and which areas are they focusing on from research point of view and then they can always contact um, you know one of the professors there and but they need to submit their application and get an approval from the professor. We can help them with the entire process, uh, you know, how the application goes, what all documentations are required, because you need to submit a research proposal and your thesis needs to be there. So it's an entire different process, you know, when students are looking at research and PhD, but then there has to be, uh, you know, students need to do a little in depth uh, uh, of the study areas which they are looking at. Thanks for that, Saru. Um, someone just messaged saying that any regional courses for Masters in Nutrition and Public Health? Uh, masters in Nutrition and Public Health are majorly available with uh, pretty much all the regional universities. I mean, University of Canberra, I know, has uh, Charles Darwin University in Northern Territory has this course as well. Uh, if you're looking at Adelaide, Flinders offers this course. Uh, similarly, Curtin offers this course. So pretty much any regional area where you say. Uh, so Masters of Public Health is a very um, generic course, which is available with majorly all the universities. And then there are dual courses also available, like Masters of Public Health with a specialization in, um, you know, the human nutrition. So uh, depends on which state the student is looking for course options are available in pretty much all the regional areas. Okay. Um, I'd like to just add, so whoever is interested in public health may also would uh, want to see um, seek for, say, um, MBA health service management. Um, public health, MBA health service management, if you study, both the courses are pretty much same. There's a great scholarship going on with Torrance University and Kaplan Business School, um, as I've discussed, health frontline scholarship. So let's say if you're working um, in an in individual support area, the lot of international students who does, you may or may not want to check this course out and see if you're eligible for 50% scholarship. So might as well want to see that. Thanks for that. Um, I think someone asked which regional was best for getting the PI. I think that's more different to case to case and depends on the course as well. But if you have any other advice, you can answer that. It's 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 a controversial question. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, I'm South Australia, I always watch for South Australia, but no. <laughs> <laughs> I would say for okay. questions in, in relation to, you know, when the students are looking for the PR options, um, I would really advise them to uh, attend our 530 session, which is a personalized Q&A session uh, in which we'll have one of our registered migration agent, you know, who will assess your profile because you can't choose a particular regional area just because you like living in that regional area. Or, you know, I, I would say that, you know, uh, obviously it depends, uh, but then depending on your profile, what will be best uh, from uh, if student is from accounting background or IT background, uh, you know, Tasmania may be the option or Canberra may be the option. So student, it has to go a case by case. So an entire, you know, detail of the student and what are the current points and what is the future the student is looking for. So it has to be a very detailed consultation where we need to check, you know, how the student fits in and what will be the choice that they go for. Thanks for that response, Saru. Um, Kulbir just asked a very general question saying, are there any benefits of Bachelor of Community Services? Um, if I may answer that, there certainly are many. Um, bachelors of Community Services, I would say, is a very, very great choice. Um, there are, I'll explain many reasons. A, um, nursing, we all know, is, is extremely popular. However, many students struggle to obviously meet the higher academic requirement, higher English requirement for nursing. For all those uh, kinds of people, if you still have the passion to look after people, I think community services is the course because the entry requirement does not um, ask you to have seven each in PT, uh, in IELTS or, or, or PTE. One, you should choose this. B, uh, community services, availability of jobs, massive. Uh, go to any um, regional area because these are small populated areas looking for more and more people. Health has been the focused area. So obviously the availability of job is much higher. Third is the accreditation. Uh, look for the program which has ACW accreditation, Australian Workers uh, Community Workers Association. If they have the accreditation, then your migration pathway will also be easy. For that, you, you can get in touch with the registered migration agent. So that's also another thing. Four, I can give many, but this is the last one for now. Uh, the employability in community services has gone up by 28%. 
So obviously that says a lot. Um, if you study that course, um, apart from not just the migration pathway, you also have an opportunity to work immediately, easy availability of jobs and lower tuition fees. So yes, good course. Yeah. Thanks for that. Um, Kingsley asked, is there any scholarships for nursing that are 50% for graduate certificate applicants? And if there are, what are the schools? Uh, when it comes to nursing, it depends which course uh, is the student going for and which university. Uh, and say, for example, if I say Swinburne University in Victoria, they have a Bachelor's of Nursing starting February 2022, and they have an Academic Excellence Scholarship, which ranges from 10% to 75%. Now, because it's based on your academics, and if you're looking at 50% scholarship, uh, you know, you should be having at least 70% uh, score in your uh, previously completed qualification, whether it was offshore or onshore and similar scholarships are available with other youth providers as well um, when it comes to excellent scholarships no worries thanks for that we do have just five minutes left we'll try to answer as many questions as we can um uh, like i said earlier if you need uh, other questions answered you can contact saru or manpreet or you can just um join the sessions or we'll also get in touch with you in the couple of weeks coming in as we all have your contact details as well um just to add on that, Sana Khan just messaged saying she did a Master of Public Health, working as a public health officer in regional. She says, what is the benefits? What are the PR pathways? She's working in a COVID response team for the department. Again, when it comes to the PR pathways, um, it, um, we wouldn't be able to answer that because uh, it has to be answered by a registered migration agent. I would uh, really advise the student to join the Q&A session at 5.30 so that you know the migration options can be discussed. No worries. Thanks for that. Um, if you have anything else to add, you can. Um, both of you guys. Um, I think uh, just to wind up the session, as Manpreet said, the key takeaways from the session is that uh, regional is, yes, uh, the current thing to do. I was just in one of the morning sessions with one of the RMAs where she suggested that, you know, if students are looking for options between 189, 190 and 491, then 491 is the way to go, um, you know, where students would have plenty of options. And obviously you get that if you are uh, studying and living in a regional area and you're looking for um, regional area uh, options. So uh, right now, Yes, many of the regional areas have become popular, especially Tasmania and Canberra uh, being uh, one of the most regional areas and more options available. And to say that uh, Adelaide is again one of the uh, hot uh, regional areas, especially when it comes to nursing qualifications. Uh, if you say Diploma of Nursing for 2021, there are no seats if the providers there you know the only next available intake is february that is the popularity why we were again talking about nursing all the time uh, we didn't want to repeat it but then that is what uh, the most popular occupation and most popular course is right now i see students uh, they are like okay even if i get bachelor's or i get masters i don't mind i just want to study nursing so that is uh, the current demand of this course and especially during these difficult COVID times uh, the government is also, uh, you know, very biased towards nursing and we can see a lot of recent invitations from the recent we can see the it's about registered nurses and health related occupations. So definitely, I would say I would just give a suggestion to students then, you know, if you are thinking of making a move to one of the regional areas, do have a detailed session with one of the RMAs and then accordingly we can suggest you with the particular course options and the scholarships. A lot of scholarships are available and there are deadlines to scholarships um, when you apply. So make sure the application is done. And trust me, a lot of students are not even aware that they are eligible for scholarships. They have great scores from some profile has 70 percent 80 percent 95 percent um and they do get 50 to 75 percent scholarships for their course and destination australia scholarship which is especially for regional areas you know 15,000 per year is amazing so this is how i would like to just uh, sum up that have a detailed thought about which regional area you are thinking of moving to and then accordingly we can have a look at the course and the scholarship options for you thank you no worries. Thank you so much for that. Again, I'd like to thank both of you guys, Saru and Manpreet. Um, please don't forget to post your contact details in the chat so the audience can get back to you. And thank you everyone for joining the session. Um, I have posted the all the further sessions links, especially the Q&A session, which you guys can join. Um, thank, again, thank you so much for attending. Thanks. Bye.